Bad about Hi there, Earthlings. Come on in. This is NASCAR.com's green white checkered finish presented by the new 2011 Ford F 150. This show is, in fact, Built for tough, and actually built by you guys, the folks who follow NASCAR, by your comments right there on the screen. Streaming along the I bottom. I said right there, there they are, right That's there right. on the it's screen. It's the magic touch we've got. My name's Bo Estes, and tough, rugged from the heartland, it's Mike Bell right here. We have three topics for you, and we're gonna start off with the green flag topic. Mike Bell, I'm just gonna ask you simply, he won two out of three. Is Kyle Busch the best driver in NASCAR, the best driver in NASCAR. Well, you Forget know, everybody else. I'm a big fan of Kyle Busch and what he can do on the track. And again, he was very close to sweeping all three races. Wins the truck race, wins nationwide. The guy can do it all in all the different series. But I'll tell you what, if you didn't watch the truck race and you didn't watch him completely dominate and lead every lap of the nationwide race, yep. all you saw him do was take out Carl Edwards. <laughs> yes. And you'd say to yourself, this isn't the best race car driver out there. I want to see this guy win a Sprint Cup championship. And Someday we'll have to argue, does, does all this other racing take away from him winning the big one? But certainly, 200 wins in all those combined series is certainly a possibility with this guy behind him. It seems like you're stepping off the SS Kyle, and I'm a little disappointed. 88 wins across all three series. You and I are keeping the watch. Is he going to get to 200 in his career to track down Richard Petty? I, I think it's a distinct possibility, but don't screw up on Sunday. I mean, do better on Sunday. He was on the radio. He was apologetic. I, I screwed things up with Carl Edwards, but I mean, I just want to see him be mentally sharp on the big race when the stage is the brightest. That's Sunday. You know who didn't finally screw up on Sunday? Apparently, 6'6 six, six was the number of the beast for Jeff Gordon. He finally gets it done. He wins in Phoenix as he and Alan Gustafson, a magic combination. Yep, new crew chief here as we have that Hendrick Shuffle. We'll talk more about that in a sec. But guys like Carl Edwards and Ryan Newman and the case of Jeff Gordon, you wonder, am I ever going to get back to victory lane? You yeah. know, I've got all these wins. He ties Cale Yarbrough. He's uh, approaching Bobby Allison and DW for 84 with his next wins. You just hope if you're a fan of Jeff Gordon, they will now come in bunches because it seems like when guys get off the schneid, they get their confidence back. And maybe the chemistry of one of the best crew chiefs out there, former Mark Martin boss, Alan Gustafson, calling the shots. This is a new dynamic. They can make this new sponsorship with the drive to end hunger work. Yeah, funny line from Jeff at the end of the race. He said, quote, we beat Kyle. Very excited. He beat Kyle Busch. And one of our NASCAR.com writers, Mark Allman, brought up a good point. Jeff Gordon beating Kyle Busch now is like Dale Jr. beating Jeff Gordon when, or Dale Sr. beating Jeff Gordon when Jeff was coming up. An interesting dynamic there. Yeah, I mean, look, you're beating the best. We just talked about how good Kyle Busch and how good the car was in the desert all week. But I think also some of the big names getting taken out, you know, some of the guys getting reshuffled in one of those earlier wrecks, I think it was lap 67, that didn't hurt either. But good for Gordon. A shot of confidence and a good crew chief. This could be the beginning of something special. A uh, checkered finish. We're going to dilate our earlier topic and talk about Rick Hendrick waving the magic wand and shuffling all the crew chiefs. And to discuss it before Mike and I do, here's Jeff Gordon. Steve's a great crew chief. He and I really click. We get along. We're great friends. And, and uh, you know, for, for whatever reason, it just wasn't, wasn't meant to happen for us. And, and I think he's great with Dale Jr. I think those guys are, are going to do very well together. So I think this is kind of a win-win, you know, for, for, for all of us. Start there. Is, is Steve Letarte great with Dale Jr.? Do you like that first? Well, I mean, we've only got a couple of races to judge it by, but after uh, qualifying 35th and looking kind of lost in practice, they got all the way up to a top 10 for Dale Jr. Yep. So, I mean, we're going to see. This is a work in progress. You know, the car got banged up Daytona, so we didn't get to see the best of what maybe could have happened for Dale Jr. in the Daytona 500. But, I mean, and not to read between the lines there with Jeff Gordon, but it seems like it kind of run its course with Steve Letarte sure did, sure and did. Jeff Gordon. And let's see if we can shuffle the deck. I like it. Obviously, nobody's going to mess with the Chad Canals, Jimmy Johnson dynamic. No, that's not changing. Lance McGrew might be the guy that's probably the most, the least of all, uh, the McGruber. The McGruber moving over to Mark Martin. But, hey, I think it's paying dividends right now. And I think Gustafson, from a tactical standpoint, just, you know, as we say, that race strategy. Strategy, He's yeah. got it. And I think him and Jeff Gordon, this really is going to be a great combo. Yeah, strategy is so important in NASCAR. It's time to move on now to our built for tough moment. And it goes out to Kevin Harvick, who gets whacked early in the race and manages to come all the way back. And this is huge because, remember, he didn't have a good finish last week. He nope. comes all the way back and gets a fourth-place finish. Yeah, he done blowed up. But not so good for his teammate, Jeff Burton, who's off to a terrible start sure. right now for Richard sure. Childress Racing. But it's tough. I mean, especially when you got a car that's all banged up, to stay mentally sharp and get back out there and turn laps and get you know get some points at it. That's what Harvick did. Yeah, it reminds me of Denny Hamlin last year in the chase. It just seemed everything that went wrong 
for him. He could turn it around magically until the very end. Can Kevin Harvick survive doing it this way? I sort of doubt it. It's no fun doing it that way, Mike. Yep, and uh, one little honorable mention to Trevor Bain yeah. from the uh, Cinderella story, as they said at NASCAR.com, to breaking that glass slipper a couple of times <laughs> in practice uh, and then on the track. So from the penthouse to the outhouse, a little Trevor Bain. Uh, reality is, is a tough dish to swallow yeah. sometimes, but Trevor Bain still has his date on a 500, so that's cool. Mm -hmm. He's Mike. I'm Bo. This is Green White Checkered, presented by the 2011 Ford F-150. Thanks for logging on, everybody.